Hi and welcome to Tabletop Gaming, the home of cool things like this, a monthly magazine dedicated to all cool things tabletop. You can check that out in the link in the description, but for now and for today we're going to talk about 10 of the best, and in this case we're going to go for 10 of the best expansions, or ones that deserve them. Now this was written by Christopher John Eggett, who is the editor for the magazine, and it originally appeared in issue 63. Now of course we know that as tabletoppers we like more, we want bigger, we want better, we want more options we want a ton of expansions and some do this incredibly well so let us begin in at number one is terraforming mars prelude now supposedly there is no competition to this this is the one that everybody mentions when you talk about a good expansion and it's nice that we have a clear contender by adding some cards which do things like kickstart your base and change the nature of the game itself by pushing you into different development paths and the like, this makes it sort of a don't play the main game without style game. In at number two, we are back at one of the sort of favourite games possibly of last year, was it the year before? Who knows in this time? It's Lost Ruins of Arnak, but their expansion, Expedition Leaders. Now this is introducing asymmetric characters, which means that you can play slightly differently. It also gives you two new challenging temples to explore. So if you're used to Arnak or you've been playing the Lost Ruins of Arnak, this is a really good one to add in to give you that little bit extra and that little bit of variation that you might be looking for after multiple plays. In at number three is Wildlands the Ancients. Now previous expansions to this series had sort of missed out the opportunity for solo play um, and this one brings it in but it brings it in in spades. It's such a good way to get playing on your own but it also gives you options with sort of collaborations of others to go all the way up to six players which is pretty impressive when you consider it's just an expansion. Add in sort of how fast paced it is, how nicely rewarding it is, it's an interesting one and one worth picking up. In at number four is A Feast for Odin, the Norwegians, because we do like a snack. This arguably not bite-sized expansion is a modular one that sort of loosens up the game with market and optional actions whilst at the same time making it much much quicker with less decisions and much more streamlined. Specifically we're not limited to two players. Plus there's a ton of shiny new islands to explore so it's a really nice addition. In at number five is another one that we almost don't need to mention because presumably it's one that you thought of already which is Catan Seafarers. Now part of the nice thing about this is obviously there are plenty of expansions to Catan and plenty of people are playing Catan but it's nice to have a favourite one and potentially a best one. So now we're moving away from land and into sea. But with each scenario that it offers, there are new ways to score points. So you might need to get somewhere first, you might trade first. All of these add to the intricacy of your usual bartering in Catan and hopefully see you emerge victorious. Number six is Star Wars Rebellion Rise of the Empire. Now Star Wars Rebellion is one of those sort of big box crazy oh my goodness there's so much stuff in it kind of one um, where having played it myself I found you make quite a lot of logical inferences as to what things are based on your own Star Wars knowledge. There's enough to find in the rule book but every time I play with like a high level Star Wars fan it's not as easy. Now this game sort of almost fixes that, it focuses more on the Rogue One era, whilst adding more Star Wars goodness to the game itself. Considering the Death Star isn't even built yet, there is a ton of dramatic moments that you can enjoy in this one. In at number seven is a Carcassonne expansion. This one is Inns and Cathedrals. Now, in a previous issue, we went through every single one of the expansions for Carcassonne and sort of rated them based on how much they added, and this was a fan favourite. If you can complete a cathedral, which are the new tiles that are added, you can gain even more points, plus add in some Inns for extra points along the roads and you're away. It's a really simple expansion to what we know and love but sometimes the best ones are. In at number eight side, Rise of Fenris. This is the third expansion to the game and it adds in some really stellar scenarios. Well, more specifically, it is an eight part scenario where you'll open boxes as you go to find out more as you do. Every scenario is slightly different um, and there's a lot of surprises to be had, especially once opening those boxes. Not that we're gonna spoil any answers here, but it's well worth it for the intrigue and interest that that brings you. In at number nine is Pandemic on the Brink. Now there are plenty of pandemic expansions or options or different versions that you can pick up. Again, we've done a guide to those previously, so check out our website to see those in a little bit more detail. But this is a really interesting one offering a virulent strain and it is a option that gives you a fifth player. And not even the best part, one of those players can be the disease themselves. Plus all your usual sort of additions. Seeing as we're now experts in pandemics and understanding what we need to do and sticking to lockdown rules, this seems like a good one. 
Finally, at number 10 is Spirit Island Branch and Claw. And sure, we love the extra spirits that come involved with this, but we're more excited at the introduction of event cards that sort of keep the game going, forcing you to prevent that analysis paralysis that has become sort of known for Spirit Island games themselves. You have to keep moving forwards. You're also going to be sort of playing a balancing game, like are you going to be taking the cheaper and easier option but at the detriment to the island or the more expensive but tougher option which is better for the island overall but takes longer and is more tricky. Plus random beasts, new ways to fight back and more. This is one that feels like almost like an essential expansion, like if you like Spirit Island yeah, pick this one up for yourself. So there you have it, there are 10 expansions as picked and rated within our magazine. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what it is that you would like to see next, what 10 of the best you are interested in, or what ones you'd add to this list. What are your must play expansions, and ones that you simply can't live without? Now, if you've been nosing at my background, you'd know that I probably would have ended up putting a Everdell expansion into there because I think they're wonderful amongst others. So I want to hear yours too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.